But I mean, it was, was when, when did they want the first one? You know, obviously they put the first one on dynamite and how did that all, how did those negotiations kind of, no, no, no. The first one was going to be with us. Right. Original. And, original. Yeah. Originally. And he got hurt. Right. Then yeah, the second, then, yeah, right. Then the second time that I talked to him, he was still negotiating with, with, uh, with AEW. So he was like, I don't know where I'm going to be on that date. If I'm going to be a free agent or I'm going to be here, or where I'm going to be, let me fix that first. And I guess while they were fixing it, you know, Tony probably thought, fuck, let me, let me take advantage of this and let me put it on my TV first, which I really didn't care because most people, most of the people that watch a triple a don't watch AEW. you know they might read about it or whatever but you know uh our fans are you know we've been around for 30 years our fans are our fans you know what i'm saying and they want to see that match in mexico and we really built kenny in no time at all into a like a rock star you know they love him in mexico you should see the reactions that he gets and um <clears throat> and part of it was i knew when he came in that if i put him in because we actually put the strap on him before AEW ever did. We also with the Young Bucks. And I remember like when the Young Bucks first showed up, I did the, you know, turn on the lights and turn them back off. The old Sabu thing, the old Paul Lee spot from ECW, remember? Mm -hmm. And people were like, who the fuck are these guys? And they were <laughs> criticizing me really bad, <laughs> you know? And I remember telling him, you'll know who they are now. I, you know who they are now because they had an incredible match and the Young Bucks got over really quick. But what we did with Kenny is we put him against the best guys we had, you know, Phoenix, Dragon Lee, you know, those type of guys, Laredo Kid, and he had great matches with all of them. So people were able to see this super athlete against our super athletes. And then we put him over. Like I made sure that the commentators were like, oh, this guy's considered one of the best wrestlers in the world. And and Hugo has a lot of credibility. So there's a guy that's with him and I would put him over and I never put anybody over. So they were like, okay, if Conan's saying it, this guy must be good. And I said, just watch. And every match he came in, you know, Kenny, bro, he's very professional and he always wants to put on a great show. I mean, as far as like um, the rest of what's going on there, I mean, what, I mean, are there guys, I mean, obviously we've, we've just seen Commander, you know, as, as coming into AEW and coming to the United States even before that with GCW, but are there guys that you expect to break into the United States in the next year that, uh, you know, could be the next on that list, so to speak, of guys that well, are on I, that? Yeah, let me just say something about Commander. Commander's only like 22. He's still green. Bro, in two years, that guy's going to be ridiculous. I mean, ridiculous. Um, uh, so one guy that I think is incredible and is just going to be even, and then one more year is going to be really huge, and you've seen him, is Jack Cartwheel. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've seen him many times, yeah. Yeah. And he's a former gymnast, incredible attitude, very creative, does really cool shit. Uh, and there's a, there's a guy that, it's going to take over a new persona. I think he debuts maybe next month. Uh, uh, it's a wrestler that's been in AAA for a while, but we're going to give his name to a younger kid. And this kid is ridiculous too. And in a month when the name comes out, or I can tell you off air, if you want to know, um, that guy's going to be really good too. So there's mm -hmm. about uh, those two. And who's the other guy? Um, uh, those two for sure in a year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and I found this, and I found this girl here. You're like this. I found this girl. I'd been looking her, for her for years and I sent various girls to train with, with wrestlers to show them how to fly. Cause if you've noticed Dave, there are no high flying girls in Mexico. Yeah. There are none. And this is going to be the first one. And she's very special. And uh, so I think that she's really going to turn a lot of heads in the United States and probably be there maybe in the next two years. This plaque. I'm still yeah. waiting for this stupid plaque. Yeah, Bischoff. Paul and Bischoff or who? What in God's name is going on? Uh-oh. Who let you in here? Everybody's favorite. Come over here. You can't even be seen. What? Oh, my God. Oh! Happy days here for Brian Alvarez. 
There it is. Presented oh, to F4W that. Online for passing 100,000 subscribers. Uh-huh. I want to give Oreo a hug. Come here, you big fat whale. Yes. <laughs> Thank you to everybody hey. out there. Uh-oh. Hey! Uh what are you doing? Brian? Oreo? Hey, oh. I'm taking over the show. Oh, no. Dom, Oreo. hit that music, brother. Ah, oh, the hell with it. You know what? It's Monday. It's dance party. No, man. Hey, no. Hey. I love you guys. I love you. When can you have this much fun on a Monday on Wrestling Observer Live? I think we may have started something new here. I hate that whale! If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.